Remember Marty Robbins? You could call him country music's James Bond. Cause it seemed like he could do it all. He brought cowboy music to the masses with tunes like Big Iron and El Paso. All while moonlighting as a race car driver and a TV host. But was he really what he claimed to be? Or was he living a double life the whole time? It's tough to know who the real Marty was. He was loved by groups like the Grateful Dead, The Who, and the King himself. He was known for being kind to his fans, but he's also been accused of violently attacking people and firing band members who felt were upstaging him. He was known for his shockingly successful NASCAR career, but he was also accused of cheating his way to the top. Today, his children are speaking out, revealing long hidden truths about this charismatic cowboy. Did Marty really save somebody's life? Did he cheat his way to the top of NASCAR? Was he censored by the music industry for his controversial opinions? And why was he really fired from the Grand Ole Opry? Today we're going to answer all these questions and more. If you enjoyed today's Marty Robbins Deep Dive, please give it a thumbs up to show your support and subscribe to the channel for more country content like this. Now let's dive into the life of Marty Robbins and find out. What, what happened? happened? Marty's Early Life To find out who Marty really was, we have to go back to the beginning. Where did he get the idea of becoming a country singer? And was this the start of his double life? Marty was one of 10 children. His father unfortunately was a violent drunk, to put it lightly. One time, Marty was in a fight with his younger brother, who just happened to be dad's favorite. And Marty's dad threw a hammer at him. So he picked it up and threw it back as hard as he could. Luckily, I guess, Marty's father left the family not long after that. Needless to say, Marty grew up a hard, mean kid. One time, he beat up an older child so bad he had to be hospitalized. Marty Robbins narrowly avoided a reform school by hiding out at a friend's farm 15 miles out in the countryside. It seemed Marty was destined for a life just like Dad's. Drinking, fighting, and never doing anybody any good. But two things saved him. First, his grandfather. This guy was a medicine man, a traveling book salesman, and most importantly, a storyteller. He would tell Marty elaborate stories about his time in the Old West, when he claimed to have been a Texas Ranger. Play the tune. It was years later that Marty realized all these were tall tales, mostly totally false. But that did not matter. Marty had cowboy visions planted in his head. Later in life, Marty would write songs like Big Iron, inspired by his granddad. By the time Gene Autry came to play at his high school, his mind was made up. He was going to be a country and western singer even if he died trying. But did he ever really change from the young hateful urchin he once was? Was his entire life honest businessman, gentle cowboy, kind family man a hoax? Man or monster? In the early years of his career, Marty worked himself to the bone just for a chance at fame. He spent several months lugging a hundred pound chunk of ice up several flights of stairs, when he only weighed a hundred and something pounds. But once he got famous, something in the guy changed. Some accused him of being aggressive, controlling, and violent. What happened to Marty Robbins, and why was he fired from the Grand Ole Opry? People were shocked when he was fired in the late 1950s. The guy was tearing up the charts, and everybody around him was swimming in money. Most importantly, he seemed like a level-headed, laid-back guy. But according to some, nothing could be further from the truth. Over the years, Marty developed a reputation for berating and firing his bandmates whenever he felt like it. One musician was fired and rehired nine separate times in three years. Some claimed this was because Marty was insecure about his talent. His guitarist said he told his band members outright, if anybody ever upstaged him, they were fired because Marty was the star. 
So when Marty was fired from the Opry in 1958, this was the reason given, that Marty Robbins was a prima donna and the Grand Ole Opry was no place for prima donnas. Some have said Marty was just too much of a straight shooter for the industry executives. And later again, Marty butted heads with Columbia Records executives when he wanted to put out pro-American, politically charged records. When they refused, he and his bandmate put them out under the name Johnny Freedom. I think I met a stripper named that once. Racing Fraud? Marty has been compared to fellow Five Tool players like Steve McQueen or James Bond. But how real was his success? Was he faking it? It's not exactly rare for musicians to step outside of their lanes and dabble in other fields. Did you know that Jeff Baxter from Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers became a missile defense expert who consulted for the Department of Defense? Or Al Green famously turned to the ministry? But most of the time, these little dalliances are just hobbies. So it was shocking when Marty actually turned out to be pretty freaking good at NASCAR racing. He raced at Talladega and Daytona alongside the legends of his day. The country singer finished in the top 10 six different times in his career. But in 1972, one event cast doubt on all his previous success. The setting was the Winston 500. Marty's qualifying time was pretty mediocre, so he shocked fans and drivers alike when he had a stellar performance, turning laps that were 15 miles per hour faster than his qualifying time. NASCAR tried to give him the Rookie of the Year award, but he turned it down. Why? Well, Marty had taken the speed restrictor out of his car just to see what it would be like to run up front for once. But this doesn't mean that his successes were necessarily fraudulent. In fact, he was very well respected by other drivers throughout his career. One time, fellow driver Richard Childress spun out on the track and his car was sitting perpendicular to the other racers. Just a sitting duck to be T-boned. If he had been hit, he could have been seriously hurt or killed. Marty's car was heading right for Richard's, but Marty decided to risk his own life and crash into a wall rather than T-bone Richard. So, while Marty did play fast and loose with the rules, he wasn't afraid to make sacrifices for his fellow drivers. Family Troubles Now everybody has a different idea of who Marty really was, and now his kids are speaking out about what it was like living in Marty's house. Who was the real Marty Robbins? Was it the angry, spiteful man that his bandmates described? Or was it the softer, cool-headed man portrayed on TV? So Marty kept his personal life pretty quiet. Not much is known about his wife Marzana, or his two kids, a son Ronnie and a daughter Janet. But he seems to have been a devoted and kind father and husband. He wrote the tender tune, My Woman, My Woman, My Wife, for Marizana. But there is one thing people have always wanted to know. Did Marty push his kids in or out of the music biz? On one hand, he seems to have wanted Ronnie to follow his footsteps. He had the teen appear on TV and sing alongside him. And he was even billed as Marty Jr. But on the other hand, he discouraged Janet from trying to be a star. He said, quote, Do anything you want to do in your life, but don't go into the music business. For a while, it seemed like his kids would follow his directions. Ronnie gave his best shot at stardom and put out music for a bit. Here he is singing his dad's song, El Paso. And Janet stayed far away from the microphone. But as the years passed, things changed. Ronnie hung up the towel and decided to spend his time running his dad's business, Marty Robbins Enterprises. While Janet, on the other hand, visited the UK in the 1990s and became enthralled with alternative and psychedelic rock. Sure, a far cry from cowboy music, but it's still music. Today, neither of them are exactly worldwide superstars, but they are charting their own paths. They may not have followed Marty's words, but they sure have followed his example. We may never know who the real Marty Robbins was, 
In fact, there might not be a simple answer. Before dying of a heart attack in 1982, Marty lived a long, strange, incredible life. He spent years in the Navy, where he fell in love with Hawaiian music. He often seemed more interested in business than music. And he even wrote and published a cowboy novel, just for fun it seems. The book was called The Small Man and told the same story as his song, Ballad of a Small Man. This could have been inspired by real life, as Marty was only 5 foot 6, but in spirit, he was anything but a small man. And for better or for worse, he lived by his own rules, the closest thing to a modern day cowboy. Alright, that's all for me, now we want to hear from you. What's your favorite song by Marty Robbins? Did you know his kids did music? Did you root for Marty on the NASCAR track? Get in the comments and tell me all things Marty Robbins. While you're there, tell us another interesting country musician we should do a deep dive on. We love hearing your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened.